So what are we about to do with the cut today, bro? Uh, just like a face, and just the size and the lineup is cool, bro. Just gonna leave the top and stuff. You do like a low, medium, high? Uh, I'll do a medium. Medium fade, and you said leave the top? Yeah. Line it up in the front? Yes. For sure. Zero fade, right? Yeah. YouTube, what's up everybody? It's your boy and I'm back with another video. And as you see the title, man, this haircut made me better. Let me center myself here. I say that because this client has a really insane, crazy hair texture. I mean, it's super curly, but it's not like your typical Afro hair texture. And I think personally, it's one of the hardest haircuts to get right, to make it look good and perfect the first go around. So, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the video. All right, so you guys just seen the intro there and here we're about to go in with the four guard. And uh, you could see right away, even with the four, uh, you could see through the skin. And that immediately should show you guys that this hair is gonna be pretty crazy to fade and deal with. And I'm kind of creating a section with my comb there right at the parietal ridge. And then after the four, I follow underneath with the three. And on this side, you see I use duck clips to section it, which usually I don't because the guard hits it when you're trying to go up to the ridge. And so you'll see me take them out. And usually with curly hair, you're able to just section with the comb and not use any clips because it'll just stay like that. But um, I think I just put these in to show you guys where the sectioning is. Yeah, you can see even with the foreguard, you can see through to the skin with that curly hair texture, which is pretty crazy. So we got our work cut out for us. Here we're just gonna put in our bald line. And I know we, we're doing a mid fade. And this is kind of like a low mid line. If I put it a little bit lower because his hair is so light, I want to get as much room to create a transition as possible from that light to dark. I was worried I didn't want to put the ball line too high and make it look like a high fade because his hair texture is so thin and light. So I, that's why I went in with the four as well. We're typically on this type of hairstyle, I would go like maybe to a three or two-ish, but because his hair is so light, um, I went the four. And here we're just putting in our first guideline with the no guard all the way open. And then we're just gonna start closing that lever up. steps just slowly closing the lever and then once you get it all the way closed you know you're fl flicking out that bald line With this hair texture, you can see right away, it's just like super prone to dark spots because the way the hair is curling, it's just curling in different directions. And this guy, he hasn't had a haircut in, I remember I buzzed his head a few months back. So since then, he's just been growing naturally like that. And so, I mean, it's not been combed, not been brushed, nothing just, so you'll see me, even if it's not in the video, just constantly brushing and combing the hair down. Because with this curly, light, thin hair texture, anytime you fade, it moves the hair around and changes the 
the shading. It creates like new dark spots or light spots. So you constantly have to keep brushing it down. Here we, we actually dropped it a little bit lower in the back. And looking back, I, I wish I would have kind of brought it a little higher in the back there. Here we were just doing the one open all the way around the head and then I'll close it up and flick right underneath the line and then I'll go to my half and just close it up. And then now here we're going with the two guard open. Remember we went but the three was our last guard for our canvas there so the two should blend right in because we went with the four guard followed him and he put the three and then here the two should just start blending into that close up the lever and then actually we're here at the one and a half guard And then switch back to our one open, just hitting some light spot or some dark spots that I see. It's not full detailing yet, but you know, I'm just making sure that line is blended out. And then same thing on the back, two open. And one thing you'll see, and I think I even show it, is from the side, the fade looks solid. But when you look at it um, front, like head on, and you look at his silhouette, Kind of has that like mushroom look which his hair i think isn't long enough for i kind of wanted to keep it more of a uh almost like a, a flat top shape for the curly top so when it has that mushroom poofing out you got to take that down and when you take that hair down it's gonna change the fade it's gonna create different shades and values and so that's why i'm not really detailing it because i want to take that that bulk down and then i'll go in in detail in hindsight though i probably should have um, shaped the hair first but I just kind of wanted to leave my options open and not take too much hair off at the beginning again following back under with the one guard and you see i'm using my corners here i'm not just straight up you know having the guard flat and here i'm showing you look at that big poof on the left side there and obviously that's part of that is from me picking out his curls a little bit but you here you see i'm going free handing i'm going with the grain i start doing clipper overcome like staining shears i start doing every using every trick in my book to um get this hair looking uh looking right You do have to be real careful with freehanding with this texture of hair because one little patch and then if they, once you get water in it, it could shrink up and then it's missing, you know, a little patch right there. So you have to be real careful and not take too much off too fast. I think that's a four guard. I'm going with the green. You see it's blending it kind of nice, you know. It's not perfect yet, but... And then we're going against the grain with the foreguard. Uh, here I just we're going straight into the lineup and you see I'm creating his hairline, like almost like a tapered hairline, but not a whole lot. You'll see here I'm using some spritz. So what I do with my comb is I just went from corner to corner, pulled out those hairs. Here I have a one and a half guard going with the grain. And then starting at the middle, we're gonna work our way out.
that's pretty easy to, to create the hairline if they don't already have one because like i said he hasn't had a cut since we buzzed it so i just sectioned off where i knew i was gonna be creating the hairline took the hair down spritzed it to stay in place because that curly hair you know it's just goes everywhere and I know it looks like I kind of created too much of a taper, but you'll see when I wet the hair and let it rest, it, it looks a lot better. I'm just following with some razor work here. Okay, and you see here, I'm wetting the hair, saturating the hair, because when you saturate those curls, it reactivates them and helps them shrink back up. Because when you're sitting there picking out the curls and it's dry, it's gonna create that afro-y. But here, you see I'm, then I'm going over far away, low heat, because you don't wanna get it frizzy. And I'm kinda using my hand as a diffuser to, so the hair is, the, I mean the air is not going directly on it. And you see it shrunk up those curls real good, it got it back to where his hair will naturally be. And then now we're detailing. I switched over to my uh, cordless masters because personally with curly hair texture, I think the masters just pick up those hairs way better with the longer, sharper or thinner teeth and the longer blade. And we're just re-going through our steps. Um, four guard, three guard, two guard. We're just down fading while we're detailing. And for any of you guys that are curious, uh, I know there's like a lot of uh, talk going around and it's been around for like a couple of years now with the new Andes guards that it came out a while back with the, the half and the one and a half and the half and the zero being different. I actually have a review on my channel if you guys want to go check that out where I talk about it, the pros and cons and, you know, the differences between the new, the new uh, Andes magnetics and the original Andes magnetics. Then we just have no guard, just using my corners, lever. And then I go in with some thinning shears here to attack those dark spots up at the top. Those little curls. See, kind of got a little red there on the C cup from the razor. Man, I need to get more of that uh, 245 shave gel because I got some Suavecito and I, I don't really care for it. It's real goopy, like almost like glue. And uh, it balls up for water to the Suavecito, but the 245 is a lot better. The aloe in it helps with irritate any uh, skin that gets irritable real easily. And here, yeah, it's just detail. We're going with the grain, against the grain, attacking dark spots, bulk, lines. And usually when I detail, I do down fade. You can see those dark spots could be real difficult with those curls because you don't want to cut it too low because once that curl is gone all of a sudden you have a light spot so you gotta be it's real finicky man that's why the title of this video man this haircut really did make me better
back to some thinning shear. And here I'm just freehanding with the shears, attacking any little strays or flyaways. But hey, I'm just finishing touches now in YouTube. Okay, tagging the line a little bit more. But this is the before. Oh, not yet, not yet. Oh, YouTube. This was the before. And this is the after. Hey, looking back, there are some little things I wish I could go back and touch up or redo, but that's why I titled this video you know this haircut made me better so thank you guys for watching i appreciate it make sure to subscribe like the video comment leave some feedback and i'm out